Hey, how's it going? And thank you for joining me once more for my Stingy Jack photo composite. And in the last video, we worked mostly on his head. So I think for this video, let's move away from his head and let's work on some other elements throughout the piece. And I think the first thing I want to do in this video is let's add in his turnip lantern. So let's take that hand and let's just move it out a little bit so we can work on it. And I'm just going to grab my turnip image. So I'm going to use this right here and I'm going to use my pen tool and we're going to clip it out. And so let's select that and let's bring that in here. And let's just keep it roughly the same size as the melon, just to make things simple on ourselves. So let's turn the opacity down on that layer. And I'm just going to warp it so it lines up with the bottom of that of that melon. Okay. So let's turn that back up. And I'm just going to make a, a levels adjustment just to darken that up a little bit. And let's put a mask on that. And just mask off where the fingers overlap. And then we'll just go in with a smaller brush and we're just going to refine that mask a little bit more. And we're just going to paint back in with white and bring that mask up right to the edge of his finger. Okay. So let's put a new layer on soft light. And let's just paint in some darks down here. Then let's do another layer on multiply and just lightly paint in some shadows. Take a sample out of the turnip and just paint some of that darkness. And let's zoom in closer. And just paint in some shadows around the fingers and at the very bottom down here. A little bit there. All right, I see we have a little bit of the melon right there, so let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna go on the hand layer and make a new layer and clip it to that. And I'm just going to paint over that with black, just so you can't see that little sliver of the melon. Okay. And so let's put some rim lighting on this turnip because Jack has some rim lighting. So let's get the turnip to match Jack. So let's duplicate the uh, turnip layer, put that on screen and desaturate that. Go to my levels. And I'm just going to push the blacks up and bring the whites over because I want to get that white edge. And then just mask off the part we don't want. So mask off all up here and down in here. Just get a bigger brush. Just mask all of this off just so we keep that nice rim lighting. And maybe darken that whole turn up up a little bit. So let's turn the saturation down and turn the lightness down. but put that under the uh, rim lighting. So we have Jack holding his turn up, but we need to carve a face in there. So let's grab a second picture for that. And we have this pre-carved turn up for us to use. 
So I'm just gonna cut this out. I don't need to cut it out too precisely because we're not gonna use the entire turnip, just the face. So let's copy that. And let's paste that in. And let's see, maybe let's clip it to the other turnip. Maybe just warp it a little bit so it sort of lines up. And let's tilt that a little bit because I don't want his finger overlapping. So let's put it right about there. All right, so let's try out some transparency modes. And that looks pretty good. Screen or lighten. Hmm. Let's try screen. That did a pretty good job superimposing the face on our turnip. But I'm gonna make a new layer behind that layer, behind the face layer, and I'm gonna just paint with black just to make it pop even more. You see when I paint with black, it really, those lights really shine. They really shine through. So I'm just gonna paint with black all around here. Just kind of rough. And down here too. All right, that looks good, but I need to mask it off right here so we can get that, that edge for the lid. So let's go into our turnip mask and just get a small brush. And we're just going to Mask it off where that lid is. And same over here. And now let's go back to our hand layer. Make a new layer, put it on overlay. Let's get a nice orange color. Take a small brush and we're gonna paint in just some of that light coming out of the uh, out of the turnip. All right, so this is getting to be a lot of layers. So let's just group all of this just to make our file more streamlined and call that turnip. Hand. And let's make a new layer, put that on overlay, and we're going to paint in some more light. Sort of, uh, sort of the same way we did with Jack's eyes and mouth. We're just going to kind of loosely paint in some orange and that's really going to make that face pop even more. All right, so now our Jack has his lantern, so he has light when he wonders the afterlife for all of eternity. So next, maybe let's um, maybe let's start adding in some background elements and some environmental elements. So I have some image options here for the background. Let's just check them out, like this one. This one, I'm just doing like a creepy, spooky forest, obviously. Hmm, I kind of like this one. Let's uh, try dropping this one in. Hmm. 
You'll maybe uh, reflect that or flip it. I definitely like it more at an angle. It just helps draw your eye in. You know, like this, it's okay, but it's a little boring. But that, yeah, I just think it's a lot more dynamic. You know what, let's try some of those other backgrounds just for, uh, just to experiment with. Because one of these might work even better. You don't know until you try. So let's paste this guy in. Yeah, I mean, having him against a dark background might work better. Let's see. I like the color of that one, but maybe it's not dark enough. We did all that work preserving those little hairs on the side of Jack's head, so... If it's against white, you're really not going to see that. But if it's against the dark, then you'll then you'll get those little pops of detail. Because I was also thinking that I might add some um, hair to the sides of Jack's head, and if it's too light in the background, you won't see that. So I got to kind of figure out where where I want the trees and where I don't want them. I don't want to screw around with the background here too much and waste time just doing this. I'm just going to turn those off for now and we'll uh, we'll get back to them. So I'm thinking in the foreground here, I want to put like a big tree and Jack's sort of going to be uh, creeping around it and reaching over it. Like right diagonal from here to here. So let's put that tree in next. I got two good tree images, and this one here, and this one here. I think this one might work better for us, so let's give that one a shot. Let's just select that, copy that, and we'll just bring that in on top of everything. And let's flip that. Let's make that a little bit bigger. And I'm going to warp that. just to get a little bit more of a curve out of that tree. Now let's call that tree. What else would we call it? And let's take Jack and maybe rotate him a little bit this way. And right now we have his finger behind the tree, but maybe we want that hand in front of the tree. So it looks more like he's reaching over it. Like he's coming at us. Yeah, I like that. It almost adds a little more uh, three-dimensionality to it. So we'll keep his hand over the tree. But let's darken that tree up a little bit. So let's make a new layer. I'm just going to paint some darks over our tree. And we'll just darken it up with the levels as well. So I was just thinking, we have all these grotesque pumpkin-y details on his face, but we don't have any on his hands. So let's add some little grotesque pumpkin stuff to his hand. And I was even thinking that maybe we can make his fingernails like pumpkin stems. I think that might look kind of cool. So uh, let's try... 
Let's go to this hand and try adding some detail to it, some grotesque pumpkin detail. All right, so I do happen to have some grotesque looking pumpkin pictures, so let's pull those up. Let's pull those up and see if there's something we can use. Like I have some rotted out pumpkins here and oh, that's a turnip. Okay. Yeah, so some of this rotted out pumpkin texture might be pretty, uh, pretty great. So let's try selecting some of this. And let's just take some of that. Paste that in. And let's darken that up a little bit. And let's make that a little more orange so it matches our hand. And turn the saturation down. And let's turn up the blacks a little bit. I think that looks good. That's starting to blend in with the hand now. Yeah, that looks kind of creepy, actually. So maybe let's grab more of that. That seems to be working out well. So let's grab um, like this section here and this section over here. And let's bring that in. Try it right there. Let's add some more. Because I think these are working out pretty good, so let's just run with it. Maybe there's like one on his fingertip. Just warp that so it fits the shape of his finger a little bit more. And maybe like one more patch. Uh, let's see, which one didn't we take yet? I don't think we took these yet. Let's put these down on the thumb here. Turn down our saturation, make them a little more orange. All right, so he's got a creepy, rotten pumpkin hand. I like it. I like it a lot. And I'm just painting with soft light just to give his hand a little more, I don't know, just to give the wrinkles a little more depth to them. So, so the hand makes, Looks a little more old and gross, maybe. All right. Yeah, you would not want that rotten hand reaching out for you. That is for sure. So I mentioned that I might want to make his fingernails like pumpkin stems. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to clip them out and I'm just going to make them all black. And I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to make them into pumpkin stems. It was just a random idea I had, so it may work out. It may not. Two. Or maybe just the black fingernails themselves are plenty creepy enough. And let's put an outer glow on that. We multiply just a little bit like of that. Let's 
So I'm just pull up my pumpkin stem pictures here. And let's see if there's anything here I can use. Like, is there anything in here that would kind of work as a fingernail? Or maybe instead of pumpkin stem fingernails, maybe just, maybe a couple of his fingers are just pumpkin stems. Like maybe he has some normal fingers and maybe a couple of his fingers are just, have totally turned into pumpkin stems. That might be interesting. Let's try something like that. This one here is kind of finger-like. So let's try out this one. Let's copy that. So, would this work as a finger anywhere? Like, could his thumb be a finger? Or his thumb be a stem? You know, if we don't use his stem on the hand, we could probably make it... Maybe we could do another stem on him. That's almost like a devil horn. Actually, you know what? Maybe that's not a terrible idea. Maybe we could make the pumpkin stems like devil horns on his head. I mean, he's not really a demon, but he kind of is, maybe? It's kind of, uh, it's kind of interesting. Like, it's kind of cool. Again, he's not the devil, and he's not a demon. But, visually, it's kind of interesting. I think I might keep that. I think I might keep that. And that was like a total accident. That's how the process happens. You just, you know, move elements around, you mess around, and you stumble upon ideas sometimes. That's just how it happens. Alright, so... That was a little happy accident we just had there. So let's put a mask on that. Uh, horn stem. All right, so that was a fun little accident. And now that I'm on the head, I was thinking about adding some hair to his head. Not a lot of hair, just like little tufts of white hair. So let's do that next. And I was thinking of adding more to his beard, which is why I have this one. But first, let's put some hair on him. So we got this guy here, and he's got a lot of crazy, wispy hair. So I think that'll work really good for us. So I'm just going to roughly select that. I don't want that. So again, we're going to go into our channels. And, you know, they're all about the same, but let's just pick red. I mean, we got white hair on a black background, and it doesn't... It really doesn't get much easier than this when it comes to selecting hair. He's like super wicked now. He's like super wicked. He's not just some guy who's cursed. He's like a full on demon now. But let's bring in our hair. And see what we can do. I kind of like that little wisp of hair on top. Let me scale that down a little bit. Maybe it's a little too long. 
and let's copy that. Just maybe have some more hair poking out here. See the problem is when you have when you have that bright uh, streak of light in the forest, it kind of his hair goes away. You don't see his hair. So if I'm gonna do the hair, I should probably get a background that's, that's a little darker or has more trees because I do like the hair, but you don't really see it there. And since we made the nails on this hand black, let's make the nails on this hand black as well. And maybe just stick one more patch of uh, rotted pumpkin right there on his palm. Let's go to our hand group and let's copy and paste that. And we'll just darken all those up. And like I said, we're gonna get one more patch of rotten pumpkin uh, right there. So let's go back to our rotten pumpkin picture. Is it still open? I might have closed it, so. Let's open it back up. And let's get these right here. I don't think I used these yet. And just warp it so it fits more closely to the position and shape of his hand. All right, so our Stingy Jack is looking considerably more demonic now than when we started, which is probably a good thing. But I'm gonna end the video there, so thank you for watching and take care.